Hello, I'd like to talk about writing a story and about process and about deadlines as well. So um, when you write a story or when you write anything, um, it's helpful to think about process and form. Process is how you do something, the steps that you take. Whereas um, form is about what it looks like, so about the format, about the grammar, about the language, about the words. Um, often when we think about writing, we think about writing kind of as a thing, like this is writing. Writing is, is an object. Um, writing is, as form. Uh, it's more helpful to think about writing as a process. Uh, so... Just to talk about process a little bit, let me give you an example of a process. Here's a process. Put some flour in a large bowl, pour in the dashi, mix to make batter, rest the batter for about an hour in the refrigerator. Oh, um, by the way, I'm talking about uh, batter and not butter. Butter and batter. Batter and butter are not the same. And I, I just want to... Uh, quickly um, talk about pronunciation and you're probably familiar with um, Japanese vowels um, a, i, u, e, o. Uh, if you speak Japanese you probably know these. Uh, you may also know the English vowels um, and you may know a, e, i, o, u and at first sight it looks the same. Japanese has a, i, u, e, o and um, English has got A-E-I-O-U. That's five. That's the same number. Um, however, English doesn't really have five. It's more like uh, almost 20. And um, when you're talking about English vowels and pronunciation, um, we sometimes see charts like this with lots of different symbols for the different vowels that we have. Um, the chart is is looking at this is a, a picture of inside your mouth and uh, when we're talking about pronunciation we talk about the high and low sounds and the front and the back so um if you say t or e as in t then what's happening is you're pushing the sound up to the top of your mouth and the front of your mouth and then you get an e sound um, if you say the word two, the sound is still at the top. It's still a high vowel, but it's at the back. Um, if you go to the doctor with a sore throat, the doctor will tell you to say ah. And what happens when you say ah is you're opening your mouth, you're putting your tongue down. Uh, so the doctor can see your tonsils. Um, so this is called, a, this is a low back vowel. Um, now Japanese is quite simple. Japanese has five um, five vowels. These are the, the technical symbols for these vowels. They're a, i, u, e, o. So i is a, is a high front vowel. Um, a is a low vowel. U is a back high vowel. O is a back mid vowel. Um, if you look at the vowels in English, then um, English has what's called cardinal vowels, and at first it looks it looks very complicated with all these e's and u's and ers and os and er, as and as and as. Um, it's actually not so complicated. The main difference between English and Japanese sound, um, Japanese has these a e u a or five sounds. If you add one more. If you add the uh sound, then it's close to English pronunciation. So adding to a, e, u, e, o, you need to just add a. Uh, and then you have close to English pronunciation. And this means you can then talk about um, Betty Botter. Do you know Betty Botter? Let me tell you about Betty Botter. Uh, Betty Botter bought a bit of butter. The butter Betty bought was a bit bitter. The bitter butter made Betty's batter bitter, but a bit of better butter makes better batter. So Betty Butter bought a bit of better butter, making Betty Butter's bitter batter better. So I hope that's clear. Um, and as you can see, we're talking about batter here. 
after resting the batter. Um, some of you may realize this is a recipe and it's a recipe for okonomiyaki. And if you follow these steps, then you'll make a decent okonomiyaki. Um, of course, if you miss one of the steps, if you, for example, miss the eggs, it won't taste so good. Uh, so um, it's good to think about writing as a process then. Uh, writing will help you to think. And writing also will help you to write. If you, if you want to be good at writing, then writing is good practice for writing. Um, reading is also very good to make you better at writing. Uh, people who are good at writing usually have read a lot. Um, however, it's important to remember that um, you don't become a good cook just by eating okonomiyaki. And the same with writing. You can't become good at writing just by reading. You do need to practice writing as well. Uh, so the writing process then, uh, there are four main steps. Um, first of all is planning. Next is writing. Next is revising and editing what you have written. Um, and the final step is proofreading. And at the moment, um, we're all writing a story. And at the moment, we're kind of in the planning stage. And we're at the beginning of the planning stage, which is brainstorming. So we're trying to think of many ideas. And the next step then is choosing an idea. So choosing the best idea that you have or the best idea that you can find. Next, we need to make a plot. We've talked about plot before. And also we need to make deadlines. So we need to decide when each step of our writing process will be complete. Um, so let's talk about deadlines then. These are, um, so these are different parts of the, the writing process. These are different things that you produce during the writing process. Uh, the plot, the first draft, the second draft, the final draft, the working title. Um, and I'd like you to go away and think about what each of these might be. Um, one of these is the whole story written out roughly. One of them is the story proofread for mistakes. One of them is a plan of how the story will work. One of them is a name for the story while you're writing. And the other one's an edited version of the story. Um, one of these then, the working title. Um, this is the name. I'll give you some examples of working titles just to help you on your way. Um, here are some movies. The um, the movies, you may know the titles of the movies on the right. The titles on the left, these were all names that were used for these movies while they were being made or before they were being made. Um, these are some novels. Um, you may have heard of these quite famous novels on the right. Um, on the left are the original names of these stories. See if you can work out which one is which, and I'll see you back here in a moment. Um, so, here are some working titles of movies. Um, hopefully you could guess which one was which. Um, A Boy's Life was the original name for E.T. Uh, How the Solar System Was Won was the name for 2001 A Space Odyssey. Now, Incident on 57th Street, as I'm sure you know, this is the name of a Bruce Springsteen song on his uh, second album, uh, The Wild, The Innocent and the E Street Shuffle, which I think he brought out around 1972. Uh, it's also the name that they used when they started filming Harry Potter and the Chamber of Secrets. Now, this song has nothing to do with Harry Potter, 
Uh, however, as you probably know, Harry Potter, this is the second Harry Potter movie. And the first Harry Potter movie was, was very, very popular. And the studio was worried that they would have lots of Harry Potter fans coming to the studio every day and disturbing the filming. So instead of announcing that they were filming the second Harry Potter movie, they told everyone they were filming a movie called Incident on 57th Street. Um, the next plan is ice, as you probably know, or possibly can guess, is um, Titanic. And Paradox was an early title for Back to the Future 2. Uh, so all these, all these titles were, were changed. These are working titles. The final title of the movie was different. Um, with these novels, again, these were um, Mistress Mary was the story name for Secret Garden. Among Ash Heaps and Millionaires was the early title of The Great Gatsby. Um, the Great Gatsby sounds a bit better. Uh, Dracula um, is the dead undead. Um, the Last Man in Europe was the early title for 1984. And uh, the modern Prometheus was uh, the early name for Frankenstein. Um, as you you may notice, the titles on the right are all a bit shorter. The uh, original, the working titles were much longer. So uh, perhaps Frankenstein wouldn't have been quite so famous if it had been called the modern Prometheus. Who knows? Anyway, um, your story. Did you choose a topic? Um, do you have a working title for your story? Did you finish the plot? Did you start writing the plot? When will you finish the plot? When will you finish the first draft of your story? When are you going to finish the second draft? Uh, when are you going to finish the final draft of your story? Um, can I ask you to make a writing schedule and set your own deadlines? Um, have you finished? Hopefully you've finished choosing a topic you should have many ideas for stories. Uh, can you pick one? Um, and could you, maybe today you should make a schedule, decide when you're going to finish, when will you finish the plot? When will you finish writing the first draft? Uh, when are you going to revise the first draft to make the second draft? Um, and when will you do the proofreading and make your final story ready? Check for any mistakes. Uh, just a reminder about, um, just to go back to Okonomiyaki for a moment. There's a very important step when you're making Okonomiyaki and also many other kinds of cooking. And that is um, you need to leave the batter to rest for about an hour in the refrigerator. This is also helpful when you're writing a story or doing other kinds of creation. It's often very helpful to leave your writing for a week and then when you go back to your writing you can see it with fresh eyes and you have a better idea of which parts work which parts don't work you may be able to spot some mistakes so um the the final deadline is the final deadline for your story is sometime in july and july may seem like a long way in the future but i don't want you to set your deadlines for your plot and your first draft and your second draft and your final draft all on the same day in July. Try and finish each step and give yourself time between each step to step back and then go back to your story. So what you need to do then, um, you need to think of a working title and you're going to write a thread uh, there is a, a new forum for your stories. Um, I'd like you to make a thread with your working title as the subject. And um, the then please reply to this message and write your deadlines. So you'll need to write a second reply with deadline as the subject and then write down the deadline for each step in your process of writing. Good luck.